Uh, welcome to uh, Tufts University. Um, I am uh, Samir Sinkasale. I'm one of the professors in the electrical and computer engineering department here and we have a lab that deals with nano where we make uh, nano enabled sensors, uh, nano enabled devices and I'm going to take you on a journey through some of the developments on field of nanotechnology in the US and around the world. So uh, when we work with nanotechnology, we have the capability of manipulating matter at this nanometer scale and that essentially allows us to engineer devices uh, at the scale that are of the same order of the settings that we have, uh, essentially allowing us to then control the processes at the cellular level, maybe sense things at the cellular level. Uh, that would not have been possible otherwise uh, with, 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 with large scale devices. So going to the level of uh, nanometers, being able to build uh, devices and systems at that level provides us with a lot of possibilities. Nanotechnology uh, today influences many different fields all the way from energy to electronics. Uh, transistors and our computers are getting faster because of nanotechnology, uh, because of the fact that we can make things at such a small scale all the way to sensors uh, and medical uh, diagnostics. Uh, there is a revolution growing on nanotechnology in medicine where we are using nano-enabled devices for sensing what's wrong with you, for detoxification of uh, things in your body, to cure you of cancer, and all the way to just uh, plain wearable diagnostic devices. So there's a lot of applications uh, is being uh, uh, pitched for and so we're going to look at some of those applications here uh, more specifically we're going to look at applications of nanotechnology in medicine it was not until the year 1990s that people really started working in the field of nanotechnology and one of the reasons why it took so long was technology had not advanced enough up until the 90s it was the invention of scanning scanning tunneling microscope uh, the afms it in the clean room which is uh, a facility where you can pattern and etch uh, things at scale of micrometers and nanometers that the field did not take off. So I'm here uh, showing you uh, one of the most recent very uh, portable uh, atomic force microscope. So this uh, atomic force microscope or an AFM essentially a device that has a cantilever tip that runs over the material that you want to analyze and it records uh, atomic level fluctuations from the surface. And here I'm actually showing you cantilever running over a sample. And the sample we have today at the moment is a sensing material that has a polymer known chitosan. And so these uh, polymers are used in drug delivery, they've been used in tissue engineering, and this has a lot of engineering, engineering properties. Uh, the goal here is to basically show you that you can actually resolve features all the way down to sub five nanometers. So when you can see things at that scale, you understand how they work and how they interact with the, with the environment and you can then design or develop uh, devices that can actually then do uh, interesting things. We also have a very interesting work on, on using uh, nanotechnology in medicine. Uh, what we've been looking at uh, in the world today is to develop these micro and nano robots. These are uh, things that are at the scale of uh, E. coli. Uh, bacteria and Arif here who worked at Brad Nelson's group in uh, ETH actually developed one of the first helical uh, micro swimmers made from magnetic bacteria. I'm going to let him explain what he's done here uh, with his work. Um, hi, uh, I'm Arif. I'm working with Samid now. Uh, so during uh, my work at ETH, uh, we developed some micro robots or we call them artificial bacteria flagella. So basically they were inspired rather mimicked by the E. coli bacteria. We were also mm -hmm. featured uh, on the Guinness Book of World Record for uh, fabricating the smallest micro robot at the size scale of 60 micrometers. We want to use magnetic fields because magnetic fields are non-invasive and this is the best approach to, uh, to uh, power and actuate the devices at such small scales. And the benefit of this micro robot is we want to use it for directed drug delivery approach, you know. So Thanks Arif. So what Arif basically just showed are these uh, tiny uh, E. coli sized robots that can entrap drugs take these drugs to the destination. So for example, you want to give chemotherapeutic drugs to a tumor. These, these robots or swarm of micro robots can trap the drugs in them. Uh, you can magnetically actuate them so that they reach the destination. 
and then they can release the drug. So uh, providing you with very precise targeted drug delivery. You can also use these robots for applications such as detoxification. Let's say you have a toxin in your blood. Uh, they could actually be present in your blood as a way to trap all the toxins and detoxify your bloodstream. So there are many possible applications for devices that can move and operate at such a small scale. So here I'm actually going to uh, talk about something we have been working on in our lab here at Tufts and that is what we call smart threads. Uh, this is one of the applications of nanotechnology in medicine. What we have built here is uh, these threads, the same threads that we make our shirts with. These threads have been made multifunctional. They, have, they are coated with uh, different nanomaterials. Uh, giving them ability to sense their environment, giving them the ability to even deliver drugs. So what I have here is one particular kind of thread on the screen showing a thread that is coated with these uh, beads. Uh, these beads are essentially micron sized pearls. And these pearls are coated with dyes, uh, optical dyes. And these dyes uh, are ones that change color when they, they sense a target in the environment. So you could imagine these threads sutured into a bandage or as a surgical suture itself that changes its color when there is infection or whether there is some kind of pathology in the tissue. So this is just showing you one kinds of thread. This is one way we've been doing it. We've also made uh, different kinds of threads for sensing different biomarkers. For example, we made threads that could sense how well your tissue is healing after a wound because when you have a wound the tissue strain which is the stretchability of the tissue changes so if you can monitor how the tissue can stretch with the help of a strain sensor which is what we basically made using these threads you can monitor whether the wound is healing uh, threads that i've shown here this is optical sensing threads we have electrochemical threads which basically changes uh, their electrical properties uh, when they sense uh, something in the environment, we also have uh, temperature th uh, sensing threads and so on. What I have in my hand here are these the same magnetic threads. Threads are coated with magnetic nanoparticles. So these threads respond to magnetic field and we can use these threads for magnetic actuation. And so basically we can make them move in the presence of magnetic field. So just as you saw, saw in the video where we had little microhelical swimmers, these threads can actually move in the presence of magnetic field so you can use them to grab things uh, which are the scale of single cells for example you can use them to cargo things from one end to the other in the presence of magnetic field and so we can make threads and we can put these things at the scale where you can lift and manipulate matter at these really uh, small length scales Now, one common misconception with the nanotechnology is the fact that they are very difficult to make. Uh, that's actually not true. Some of the devices, very useful devices, uh, can be made very simply using uh, low-cost materials. And this is important because there is a lot of need for sensors and diagnostics in the developing world where they may not have the resources necessary to make devices. So there is a a need to be frugal in your engineering approaches when you make some of these devices. So Yu Chen here is a doctoral candidate at Tufts University in my research group and she's working on uh, optical and electronic sensors for the environment. Uh, so these sensors are actually made on the most high-tech material which is just a regular paper substrate uh, and she's coated them with different nanomaterials and optical dyes and these sensors respond to different gases in the environment, uh, toxic gases in the environment, so you can monitor pollution. They respond to carbon dioxide levels, uh, carbon monoxide levels, and also volatile organics, petroleum distillates in the air. So you can imagine these sensors, people carrying around and monitoring the environment uh, they breathe uh, and the water they drink uh, using very low cost sensors. Most of the effort in fabrication is to make the inks that we use in the printer that are that sensitive. So, so the research effort is goes in making these inks that are environmentally sensitive. Uh, so, so far in our lab, so we can build optical sensor arrays on the piece of paper. We have an array of optical sensors uh, in the middle. So, and on the uh, outer circle, we have a series of our uh, nanomaterial based sensors. 
So essentially this sensor can be used in what I call two modalities and uh, one of the modalities is electrical. Uh, so you can record electrical activity in response to the environmental gases. The other is optical, uh, they change in color. The reason why we do it two ways is because it adds uh, more reliability to your measurements. So you essentially uh, are getting more reliable, accurate estimates of what you're trying to sense. So these sensors can be used for monitoring your traffic pollution as you get from home to work. Or it could be monitoring coal mines. It could also be used for monitoring pollution in, in office spaces, in the day-to-day -day use. So this is a sensor that's real-time that will continuously provide you with information about the air you're breathing and the water you're drinking. And the, and the ability to do that has been made possible because of the extreme sensitivity of these nanomaterials that have been used to, 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 to make these sensors. So maybe I can, I can give one example. One example. Yeah. So uh, this is ethanol. So this is one of the yeah, so, yeah, this is one of the volatile organic compounds. So let's uh, let me dip a little bit of uh, ethanol. And so as we can see, uh, now the color of the ethanol is like this. So if we are uh, apply like ethanol. Yeah, color changes. Yeah, to the uh, optical array, you can see the immediate color change. So this optical dyes would respond to any analyte in the environment. It's a cross-reactive sensor, which basically means it will change its color when we use multiple sensors, uh, multiple dyes. Uh, so we call this the electronic nose approach, where we have a lot of sensors. Uh, they are all responding, and we use a brain-like pattern recognition to figure out uh, what uh, the target is. So these sensors are low cost, and one of the great advantages of making these low cost is that almost everyone can use it, and they're also very easy to read and operate. So you don't need a specialist to understand how the sensors operate and work. And one can imagine people carrying these sensors around with them being able to completely map out the pollution levels in the city or the environment that they're living in without the need for a technician or a specialized laboratory facility to figure out uh, what the pollution levels are. So, of course, this is just the sensor. It comes with its own uh, package where we put the sensor in and it reads out. Uh, and this is also very portable. So this is one of the applications where we have demonstrated that you can make a nano rebel sensors for day-to-day -day, uh, applications. And I think this is very promising. Thank you. So I showed you uh, applications of nanotechnology in medicine. We looked at applications where we use nano and micro robots for, for targeting cancer cells, for doing surgery, for doing sensing. We looked at smart threads that can be used for sensing the environment and also some applications using nanomaterials for sensing the environment on a piece of paper that we realize on a piece of paper. So all these applications are just a tip of the iceberg. There are a lot of applications in nanotechnology ranging from energy, environment, uh, health, medicine, uh, to agriculture. Uh, and essentially nanotechnology spans almost all the areas that is bound to grow and there should be a lot of interest and excitement in this field. And hopefully that interest and excitement uh, leads to a lot more public support uh, and government support for this field. Thank you.